Dear colleagues, Dr. Krauss and I would like to welcome you here in the Remasis Laboratory. Today we'd like to present a unique project regarding the treatment of fractures. And here's why. At the Remasis Laboratory, fractures are being simulated on cadaveric knee joints as you can see here on the screen. This, for example, is the axial CT section of a tibial head fracture, which has a lateral fracture profile here, with a lateral central impression. Here is another fracture line running across the plateau and the cruciate ligament region. And here, medially, it has another fracture line. In the sagittal image, you can see that there is also a dislocation of the fracture, so there is a clear indication for surgical treatment. Our strategy is to treat the fracture as follows. First, we are going to use a lateral approach to fixate the lateral and posterolateral main fragments. This central fragment will be difficult because the region is very hard to get to. The plan here is to extend the lateral approach via an epicondylus osteotomy in order to examine the central parts here. Then we are going to raise this fragment, look at it from lateral, reduce it, and fixate it. Eventually, we are probably going to use another two screws to refixate this fragment in jail technique. Medially, we will need a plate from posteromedially that basically fixes and supports the entire medial plateau. So here, we will need a buttress plate. The entire procedure will be carried out in prone position. As mentioned before, we are going to do this treatment on a cadaver knee with a lifelike fracture. In my opinion, it is a very realistic fracture situation, so we can take a close look at the approaches, demonstrate the anatomy precisely, and take all the time we need to exactly explain the procedure. We're going to start posterolaterally, demonstrate the fracture, reduce and fixate it, and then continue with the medial condyle to treat it appropriately. Here you see a right knee joint in prone position. Here is the fibula head. I'll roughly mark it, and approximately, here is the joint gap at this height. The incision will be directly above the fibula. So the incision goes till about 10 centimeters below the head of the fibula. Now we dissect the posterior side of the biceps. You can see the biceps here, the posterior edge. And at the right posterior edge of the biceps, we open the fascia. And usually the perineal nerve appears right here. This is the nervous peroneus. The fascia can be opened easily here. That is relatively safe. One has to be careful with the perineal nerve. And now we see another two important structures here. We see the aponeurosis of the lateral gastrocnemius head, and directly underneath it lies the soleus. We usually use a finger to go in between soleus and the lateral head of the gastrocnemius, and basically we then get to the posterolateral tibial head. We take the perineal nerve aside to protect it and keep it safe. It's important to make sure not to pull too strong. The perineal nerve is relatively sensitive, so pulling too strong can, at least temporarily, lead to foot flexor paresis. Here we see the triangle where we have to go in. This is the neurovascular bundle. And here we see a small branch of the popliteal artery, the lateral inferior genicular artery, with its corresponding vein. It needs to be ligated or coagulated to reach the posterolateral tibial head here in the deep. We now carefully dissect the soleus off the fibula head without damaging the perineal nerve, and at the end of the operation, it will be reattached. Under protection of the perineal nerve, the soleus then opens up a field behind the head of the fibula, as you can see down here. Here we are already approaching the posterolateral tibial plateau. Now we can cut the lateral inferior genicular artery. Here the popliteal muscle can be seen very well. It can be incised a bit at the distal end, as one can see here. And now we start to see the fracture right here. There's still periosteum on it. Small ligaments at the head of the fibula can be cut in order to display the fracture better. We are now holding the popliteal muscle aside and we can see the popliteal groove here on the upper edge. Here is the fracture. We are looking right at it. It is a very thin, osteoporotic fracture. Here is the posterolateral plateau, which is stable. Here is the head of the fibula, 
the perineal nerve, and the vessels are held aside. Now we are facing the challenge of one central impressed fragment, which is about two centimeters in depth. We can hardly see and reduce it from here. That's why we now need a lateral window. Continuing in the prone position, we rotate the knee outward to reach the lateral plateau. Here on the side, we can nicely see the anatomy. The head of the fibula, tractus iliotibialis is anteriorly to it. This is the biceps femoris, and here ventrally to the biceps femoris is the entry to the lateral plateau. Gertie's tubercle would be underneath here. We can detach some fibers of the tractus longitudinally and get a first view inside, now from the lateral. This is the lateral window into the tibial plateau. There are no more critical structures here, so we can dissect relatively safely here. Up here is already the lateral collateral ligament. Unfortunately, it's our natural posterior border. This can be lifted up, and we get a lateral look into the tibia plateau. We could just see that we were not able to view the dented central fragment through our lateral standard arthrotomy. We cannot access it sufficiently. We can't even display the fragment enough. Therefore, we now need to enlarge the incision. We will gain more insight after osteotomy of the lateral femoral epicondyle. While doing so, we need to be careful not to injure the popliteal tendon down here. It lies below the lateral collateral ligament, and we can nicely see the lateral epicondyle. Now we can osteotomize it together with the lateral collateral ligament. After marking the epicondyle with small incisions, we can carefully chip it off. Now we can free the lateral collateral ligament from small capsule structures. Here you can see complete dissection of the lateral femoral epicondyle with its attached lateral collateral ligament. This allows us to start the repositioning. Therefore, we lift the lateral meniscus and examine the central fragment. From this position, we can nicely reposition it. Now we can close the tibial plateau fixate it with a K-wire, and control via X-ray. In the X-ray, we just saw something very typical. The tibial head remains a bit too wide after the provisional reduction. We can see the gap here in the back. Also, the fragment is still not repositioned completely. We will now elevate this a little to fine adjust it. Then we are going to try and reduce the fracture with ligamentotaxis. We are going to use a tension screw here to compress the tibial head, especially posterolateral. The K wire is directly in front of the biceps tendon. It's at the same height as the front edge of the fibula head. From posterolateral, the screw is now inserted in jail technique to further support this posterolateral fragment. We have repositioned the tibial head now and roughly fixed it with K wires. Now we are going to use two cannulated screws to pull together the slightly too wide tibial head. With this screw, we particularly fix the posterolateral segments. It's important not to choose this front screw too long because we have to lift up the anterior medial fragment, which we could easily block with this screw. Unfortunately, the tibial head is very soft, so we really have to place these screws directly under the joint surface, otherwise they won't hold. Here is the illotibial tract. Now we apply the plate from the lateral, and please keep in mind that the patient remains in prone position. 
even in prone position you can relatively easily apply the plate. Basically, we percutaneous slide in the plate here. We use a very long plate because the fracture runs relatively far distal. Now we have reduced the lateral side and adjusted the joint surface. So it's time to take care of the medial side. To do so, we approach from the posterior medial. This is where we need to do our incision in order to dissect into the depth medially of the medial gastrocnemial head. That is the fascia of the gastrocnemius muscle where we start the dissection. We open it up here and have to pass the medial end of the gastrocnemius to then get to the popliteal fossa. Here you can see the aponeurosis of the medial gastrocnemial head again. We just hold it to the side and at the upper edge of the popliteal muscle, we open the deep fascia again and work ourselves further into the depth. We can already feel the tibial head here. The plate needs to be positioned posteromedially, directly behind the popliteal muscle. And now the fracture appears. This is the fracture. And of course, this has to be properly reduced and fitted here. The posteromedial capsule is extremely thick at the back, and if you want to see the joint, you can also detach the capsule from the tibial plateau, as you can see here. We enter the capsule here in the back. Cutting the capsule and the meniscotibial ligament is not dramatic. And now we can look into the joint onto the joint surface. With my tweezers, I'm holding the semimembranosus. Here, you have to be very careful. You cannot cut more, otherwise the knee becomes ligamentarily unstable. You can see the fracture here. The fragment is positioned quite well. Finally, we can apply the plate posteromedially to hold the main medial fragment. So we have repositioned the tibial head quite well, and now we are going to fixate it. We use locking screws to assure optimal stability in this massively osteoporotic bone. Then we fix the lateral epicondyle here with these two tension screws. And finally, the knee is stable again. This is the lateral collateral band, which is fixed again so that the tibial plateau does not move here anymore. Before, you saw how far we could open it up. This is not the case anymore. The joint is very stable again, and you can hardly see into the joint surface, which has been raised and repositioned very well here. Now we're going to do a final x-ray, and then we're done. Thank you very much.